What's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another Giants video. So, Dave Gettleman. I'm just going to get straight into it. Dave Gettleman, man. Been a hot topic essentially since he was hired back in 2017. <laughs> uh, last year when we fired Pat Shermer and we cleaned house, you know, the Giants cleaned house of the coaching staff and the... Uh, a lot of people, you know, a good amount of people in the front office and whatnot. Gilman survived. Ownership kept them around, but they did put them on notice. They kept them around because, you know, quote unquote, I remember this exactly. They were like, they want to give him a chance to finish what he started. And going into this season, ownership said they want to see a lot of progress. They want to see that there's at least some pieces there to make a run you know, or to become a contender for the Super Bowl. They want to be playing meaningful footballs late in the season. And they want to see actual progress, not just on the field, but in terms of, you know, the team getting closer to the playoffs and to the Super Bowl. And here we are. It's uh, December 31st, you know, about to enter 2021, a whole year after December 30th, which was when we cleaned house and retained Gettleman. Uh, and it's not exactly a clear answer as to whether or not he's going to be fired or he's going to be retained. <laughs> you know, I mean, because guess what? We're five and ten. We could go five and eleven. We could go six and ten. We're you know another year basically of picking in one of the top fifteen picks in the league. However, there has been much improvement. You guys noticed from me at least. I've been saying it all year. This has been a really good year. This six and ten team is way better than the four and twelve team of the New York Giants last year. It's not just two games better. This is a team that was legitimately, you know, being competitive in like 90 percent of their games that played eight playoff teams this year and fared well against them and that was just overall a better product on the field had better coaching throughout the entire year than what was displayed last year and i honestly in my opinion has the pieces to you know has a lot of the pieces to make a playoff run or be a contender next year it's just that there's a couple you know missing puzzle pieces left you know we got like we got like 85 percent what we need Add that remaining 15% and we're gonna be there, right? I just want to say that. But it does remain that we're five and that we're five and eleven or six and ten team, and that would put us somewhere that the Maras don't like. However, as a counter to that, we are doing something that they wanted. Guess what? We're playing meaning for football. Guess what? Would a win this Sunday and a possible, you know, and a Washington loss? We are actually in the playoffs. It's not the way we want to get there, because let us, you know, address the facts. The only reason we're in playoff contention right now is because of how bad the NFC East is. If this was any type of regular year and the Giants finished with a five and you know five and eleven, six and ten record, I'm not sure if Gettleman stays. Even though, in my opinion, in the second year of a rebuild, a six and ten record is like right around exactly where you need to be. You know, that first year, honestly, the first year of a rebuild is never good. It's always probably the worst year. You know, you're, you're starting off fresh with a lot of new pieces in terms of talent, sometimes coaching. The second year of a rebuild, you're making progress. And to me, a progress year is around that six and 10, seven and nine record. You're improving, but you're not quite there yet. And our second year was just that, except it was more difficult because of COVID, because of lack of off season. And because we technically started from, you know, started fresh, started from scratch, at least with the coaching staff yet we're still on pace and that third year is really when you when you want to make a jump you want to be in the nine and seven you know ten and uh ten and six type of range probably making a run for a wild card spot and from there on out you know you just want to be consistently a good team we're still on schedule for that and then according to what the Myers want to see they want to see competitive football late in the season this is as late in the season as you get my guy it is week 17 and the giants are legitimately fighting for a playoff spot once again it we're not fighting for it because we necessarily earned it but we're there so it does leave the status of gettleman very very complicated and in my opinion 
while you know I've, I've been very consistent on this you guys know i get you could define me as a gilman guy i would want dave gilman to come back uh, but i'm gonna speak here i'm gonna try and speak from what the maras are thinking and the tishes are thinking if we go 5 and 11 i don't think he's back meaning if we lose this game against dallas i don't think he's back if we do win against dallas though, i think he's back and, and that, that's regardless of whether or not washington loses so if we make the playoffs 100 i think gilman's gonna be back i think they're gonna bring him back if we win against Dallas, I think there's a greater chance of us bringing him back versus if we just lose against Dallas. I think, you know, winning against Dallas would, you know, send a good message to them, you know, ending the season on a high note, beating a team that we haven't managed to beat since 2016, just like we did with the Eagles this year. And just setting a really good note in terms of we will finish with the best division record in the NFC East. You know, we'd be the team that doesn't make the playoffs. I think we'd finish third in the division if we beat Dallas and Washington still wins. But we'd be the team with a 4-2 record in the NFC East who could have legitimately gone 6-0 in the NFC East. And that right there, I think, is a good, you know, equation in terms of for bringing Gallman back, at least from the Maris perspectives. Because nobody expected us to be this good in the division this year. I mean, even though I didn't. I, I think I predicted at the beginning of the year that we would go 3-3 three three or 4-2 in the division. So I guess maybe I did, but 4-2 I, I even said in that video. That was way back. That was like, what, August? When I made that prediction video and I said four and two might be a bit optimistic, but I'm gonna go three and three. I think the Giants will be really good in the division this year. And we were exactly that. We were really good. We were near perfect. We were a drop away from being five and one. And this is assuming we win against Dallas, right? We're a drop away from being five and one. We were a couple play calls from the refs, you know, play, you know, calls being called back from the refs from being six and oh. <laughs> and on top of that, right now, if we did come away with those games, we're seven and seven. I don't want to live too much in hypotheticals right now just because, you know what I'm saying, the past already happened, there's that, you can't change the past, leave that there. But this is a team that could be 7-7 seven and seven right now instead of 5-10, and 10. and when you think about that, that's absolutely crazy, right? But obviously the, the Maras are just not going to judge Gettleman's um, career here by just this year, how the team performed this year, and judge whether or not they want to keep him by just this year. What I will say though is... I don't know, I'm a get him guy, so a lot of you might not like this, but I, I think he's had a good tenure here. I think he's had good drafts. I think, you know, when he finally got some money to spend in the offseason, he's had a great offseason in terms of free agency this past year with Bradbury and Martinez. A lot of things are going for him if they were to judge just this year of Dave Gettleman's stint here. But when you're judging the whole thing, it's not pretty. The drafts are looking nice. You know, 2018 draft is looking, you know, less and less lustrous as the years go on. I will never, you know, say I will never go against the Saquon pick. I always want a Saquon to come here. Um, You could argue all day about whether or not a running back is a pick at number two. But in my opinion, Saquon was the right pick. That's just me. Maybe my thought changes in the future years. But what's looking less and less like the right pick is Will Hernandez in the second round. It's BJ Hill in the third round. Lorenzo Carter in the third round even though I have a lot of faith in him you know I thought if he stayed healthy this year he would have been good that draft is looking you know worse and worse as the years go on obviously the 2018 free agency is definitely the worst but once again he didn't really have the money to spend until 2019 2018 um um I mean 2020 he didn't really have the money to spend until 2020 2019 free agency is not much better really the only name that pops out would be Marcus Golden you, you can't ever forget the terrible sign of Antoine Bethea and whatnot but once again, you think about the money and the 2019 draft was very good. The 2019 draft was definitely better than the 2018 draft. You know, you got a guy that you hope would be your franchise quarterback. And this goes back to the Dallas game. I think this Dallas game is really going to have a great say as to whether or not Gelman stays here. Because if Daniel Jones could also finish out the year with a bang and on a really good game, that just, you know, is a plus for Dave Gelman. We're no we're nobody is still sure yet if DJ is actually the franchise guy. A lot of people want to stick with him, including myself. Yes, I want to stick with him and find out next year what to add weapons if he is, but we don't know yet, right? And we always said Gettleman's career would really be staked upon how well this Daniel Jones pick goes through. So that is yet to be judged, but that 2019 draft as a whole was really good. You know what I'm saying? Really, the only blemish is Baker, which isn't even his fault, to be honest with you. And I love the 2020 draft. Look at how much the 2020 draft has helped out this team this year. You know, every single level of it has had playtime. So it's definitely going to be hard, but this Dallas game is really, really, Gettleman's going to be really riding hard for a win and a good one and a good game by DJ. But let me know what you guys think, because it's really complicated right now as to whether or not he's going to come back. This was not a video of me saying 
that I want him to be back because that's not a secret. Of course, I want Gilman to be back. This is more just kind of figure out where the Mariners stand right now. And honestly, I don't think anybody knows that. But put your thoughts down below and let me know what you all think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.